UPPOptionMillionaires.com after the closing bell here on Tuesday, October 13, 2015. Going to be brief as S&P 500 futures continue to fall after the bell. Earnings report, J.P. Morgan Chase falling, but rebounded, uh, cutting a lot of those losses after its earnings report. I'll show you that in a second. Also, Intel actually uh, trading to the upside. Uh, but if you look, S&P 500 futures rocketed out of the gate this morning. Uh, you can see it hit, hit its high uh, about an hour and a half into the trading session. It's been selling off ever since. Pretty nasty selling into the close. The volatility index was up today, and it just looked like a, a bounce that you would see after something's been beaten down for so long. I think it was seven consecutive trading sessions. So you look at S&P 500 futures still after the move we've had up from the lows just a week and a half ago. Still loft, still up here. So if you look, support's going to lay right around here, the levels that we saw at the middle of last week that we could not bust above. Those are going to act as support in the overnight session here. We'll see if we get a bounce. And this could just be, in fact, more consolidation before the move continues to the upside. However, I continue to look at this chart from a long-term price perspective. And I think the market has put in a nice topping pattern. You know, everybody was talking about the market topping, especially as we started to continue to the upside, this record historic bull market. Uh, but now, certainly the trend has stopped. We started to roll over here. We're getting a bounce. Uh, this neckline is right here. Uh, we hit it back in October. We hit it again here in August. We're bouncing here. So this be a left shoulder, a head, a right shoulder of a long-term topping pattern. What would this imply? Well, you look from a long-term perspective, you draw a trend line across. Support would be about this level here in S&P 500 futures. Where you could do a corresponding uh, trend line for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, for the NASDAQ, for small caps. But it's something to keep an eye on that we're forming some sort of a right shoulder here that's going to lead to downside. If you look crude oil, again, I talked about this in, in, in that past couple of weeks that we're just seeing some sort of a dead cat bounce here. For crude oil, you draw a trend line here, go back 20 years, and you can see this, this chart continues to want to head to the downside as long as it's not break over long-term trend line resistance, which it fell below earlier this year. You see it tried to make its way back up to it. Look what happened. Got rejected. We got this beautiful red candle. We're going to continue to the downside. That's what it looks like to me. And then on the flip side, the dollar index is on the poise of a big breakout here. You can see the move we have back up, the internet bubble, financial crisis. Everybody thought the U.S. dollar was just going to turn into toilet paper. It's done the exact opposite, especially over the last 9 to 12 months. You can see the rally that has brought it up, to, brought us up to this beautiful wedge pattern that I think is going to continue the trend that we started back at the end of 2013, start of 2014. The move is going to send the U.S. dollar index up into triple digits again, as we did earlier this year. That is going to affect corporate earnings. It's going to blow up the emerging markets, especially the debt denominated in U.S. dollars. It's going to make debt more difficult to to pay off, and and I think that's just going to spiral uh, into this crisis that's going to send the stock market lower and which conforms with the price pattern we're seeing for the S&P 500. Topping pattern in place. Uh, let's look at a JP Morgan Chase earnings report after the bell. Talked about this one this morning in my uh, update. You can see the initial move down to 60. It's still mired in a range. So if you look, the top side is the record highs that we saw back earlier this year, a little over 70 bucks. Bottom is the August lows at about 57. It's in that channel. So we'll see uh, this is going to affect financials tomorrow. Bank of America, I think, seeing a sympathy move to the downside. Uh, also, Goldman Sachs reports earnings after the bell. Intel talked about this earlier this year, had a great head and shoulders pattern. You can see it. Uh, the initial move was to the upside after its earnings report came down, but I think this is one of those stocks uh, when we have the earnings report comes out, you know, it might start the trading session higher. We saw it with Microsoft a couple times over the last uh, couple earnings reports uh, where it just continues to melt after the opening bell, and I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, I'm hoping Intel opens to the upside tomorrow. I'll buy some puts. To trade for downside. All right, you people here, optionmillionaires.com. So that's my outlook here for the market. You look at the bond market also trading higher. Uh, TLT was up uh, about two tenths of a percent. But if you look, to bring up a chart for the SP 500, you can see the head and shoulders pattern relevant here. Also, TLT hitting support recently, bounced above it. We look for a short term target here for TLT of the 130 price. And uh, I'm going to trade some calls. Uh, into the end of this week. All right, you could be optionmillionaires.com. I'll probably have a recap later on, but just want to get my thoughts out here on a video. Everyone have a great evening. Take care.